what happens here, in theory, I, I should say again, this is all theory. What happens here is this GF, GSM signal, say, getting parasitic on this throttle line, or perhaps a cruise control line. or perhaps some benign wire that may even be an analog in nature, once it gets into the computer, whether it's directly on a digital line or into the, into the ECU, uh, all, all havoc can break loose. <clears throat> Basically, why this is particularly dangerous in, say, a digital line, if this sensor goes up and we have a another microcontroller that's reading this and this sensor and a bunch of other sensors in the cockpit based on user intervention and then we're sending nothing but serial data back to the electronic control unit uh, you have a great potential for conflict because this ECU is looking if this is a data line it's looking for particular binary codes and it's not going to do anything unless it gets what's expected, one of a probable code that it wants. And naturally, the cell phone and this ECU do not speak the same language. So if you're trying to get the cell phone to communicate with us, it's not going to happen. Because this data rate is going to be different than what the cell phone uses. And the language isn't going to be <coughs> the same. It's still all ones and zeros. What's happening, in my belief, is that when that cell phone is in close proximity, and generally that takes an area of uh, around three feet, uh, but it's, it's dependent. If you're traveling down the road and you get in between cell towers and that signal becomes weak, the phone's going to automatically step the power up. And if that phone is sitting on the console uh, in between driver and passenger seat, you're in close proximity to all the wires and this ECU unit. Because all that stuff is in, embedded in the dash, uh, in the cockpit area of the car. But what can happen, when this information gets on here, and you have what appears to the computer all this binary information, these ones and zeros, flying by probably at a different rate, it doesn't understand most of it, so it does nothing. But much like if you were listening to a foreign radio broadcast and you don't understand any of it, but once in a while you hear a word that sounds like an English word. That's kind of what's happening here. If this data is flying by so fast, and every once in a while something comes by that resembles a command, and that command happens to be, we'll say, set to cruise control for 80 miles an hour. This is, this is one potential problem. If it were getting in on an analog line into the ECU, and it's, it's really hard to say, I mean, with all the circuitry in there, it's just hard to say what other devices in these low voltage control units, what it can flag incorrectly. So basically you have all this information getting on these lines and like under normal circumstances it may not be a problem. But every on every occasion it will understand something as a command. It might not be a reasonable command but it understands it and acts on it. Now, a lot of times, we get back to the, the way things used to be made <coughs> when they made these changes to Part 15 of the rules. Most devices would have been shielded, would be maybe encased in metal. In fact, you'll find that these ECUs in an automobile are or shielded by themselves to protect the computer circuitry uh, inside. So that keeps 
strong RF signals away from from doing anything any harm. Yeah, well, the disclaimer is that no, we're not picking on we're not picking on Toyota here. We're trying to demonstrate that these new technologies can conflict with each other. Uh, the only reason the GSM <coughs> was accepted in this country beyond the normal rules is because it was already being used in the rest of the world and they wanted a standard to run everywhere. However, in doing so, it really kind of turned her back on Part 15 and as a modern look that I've had with, with the Part 15 the FCC rules, I really don't even see where it governs uh, in this fashion uh, tele telecom or their cell phone communications. Now, if one were to believe my theory, and you would ask, say, well, what can I do to stop this? Well, first, I mean, everyone tells you, don't use a cell phone in the car. Well, that would probably be true. If you, I don't really think anybody's going to do that. So, I mean, if you find you had to use one, if you had to have it on, I would say keep it away from the dashboard area. Uh, actually keep it close to your body. It kind of shunts off a lot of that RF and that means less to be absorbed in, in the wiring of the car. However, that's also a health risk. Uh, anybody will tell you you really shouldn't keep them in your shirt pocket, etc. If I go to uh, any, any electronic device that you buy now, has to carry a Part 15 FCC disclaimer. And in my own search, uh, I went through five boxes of wireless routers and several boxes of wireless cards to uh, not find a written document of the Part 15 disclaimer. However, getting one of the installation discs and scouring that pretty good, I did find the uh, documented disclaimer. <coughs> and the way this reads here for my uh, wireless card, this device complies with Part 15 of the FCC rules. The operation is subject to the following two conditions. This device may not cause harmful interference, and two, this device must accept any interference received including interference that may cause undesired operation. Now, if we're to treat Toyota cars like this, I think you'll find that that's pretty unacceptable. Having an iPhone, I thought it was quite interesting of all the, of all the disclaimers I read. Some of them had some variance in, 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 in particular about their type of product. Yes, my, in my iPhone manual I find <coughs> radio frequency interference. Nearly every electronic device is subject to radio frequency interference from external sources. If inadequately shielded or designed or otherwise not configured to be compatible, as a result, the iPhone may cause interference with other devices. Follow these instructions to avoid interference problems. Aircraft. FAA regulations prohibit using wireless devices while in the air. For more information about using airplane mode to turn off iPhone wireless transmitters, see the user manual. Vehicles. RF signals may affect installed or inadequately shielded electronic systems in motor vehicles. Check with the manufacturer or its representative regarding your vehicle. <coughs> For vehicles equipped with an airbag, an airbag inflates with great force. Do not store the iPhone or any of its accessories in an area over the airbag or in the bag deployment area. And the reason would be in this same theory of parasitic radio signal on a wire to the airbag deployment microcontroller. 